Hi, I'm uh, Glenn from Story. We provide digital tools for the tourism, culture and destination markets. And we work with over a thousand organizations worldwide from single person tour operators to major museums and cities. Now, for multi-way tours, having an added, added digital component can enhance your guest experience by offering them some additional uh, features. So they can do things like things to do on their trip that may be outside the organized group tours, information on the cities they're visiting, self-guided tours to, at destinations to let your guests explore on their own, make it easy to book tickets to optional events. For tourism destinations, you can offer your guests content in multiple different languages. For example, you may have a guided experience, but lack the staff to cover all the languages of your visitors. By augmenting the visit with a digital add-on in their own language, your guests will leave feeling that they got the most out of the experience. What I'm going to do is take you through a couple of apps to show you some basic features and then dive into the app builder to show you how easy it is. Now, you can build these apps and your content yourself, or you can get us to do it. We work with partners around the world. So, you know, it's really easy to, if you're a, a single uh, tour operator um, with a small group of guests, that you can do it all of yourself, or you may want to pay us to do it and help you out. Um, the option is yours. So let's start with showing you what the app looks like to the end user. Note that I'll be showing the web version of the app, but these are also available as native apps on iOS and Android and available through the App Store. So let's just dive right in here. So I've got up here a couple of versions of our mobile web app. I'm going to start with one called Auckland Stories. Uh, that's based in, in my hometown in Auckland. Um, some of the basic features of our platform that you might want, you can have these different tabs along the bottom here. Um, and you can configure how these are. So I've got one here that's got different tours. And in this particular app, we've broken down some of these uh, things by different parts of the city. So if you've got a multi-bay day tour that's going to different cities, you may have the different cities there listed as these different uh, items to get through. So I'm just gonna go through here, one called Central City Walks and click on the original shoreline walk. Um, now we can have these tour overviews in here. So you may get to a uh, destination, there may be a walking tour of um, the historic landmarks or an architecture tour, um, or a, a list of different shops that people might want to go to. Um, the user just hits the start tour button here. Uh, we've got an introduction screen. We can go between the stops on the tour, um, no problem. Or we can just navigate to any of these items using a list. But the real power comes in here when we've got this mapping button. So we can open up the map there. It will zoom right in. So these are all of the stops with inside the tour that we've got. Um, we can choose these different custom icons with numbers on it, if you like. We can draw the route on the map. Um, and then we can also get like directions and, and locate yourself on the map as well. Um, it's really great to be able to go through, click on these items, and then simply go to these different points of interest. Um, if we look at here, this is uh, a spot down the bottom of our road from our office. It's a uh, it's an old pub. Um, and we can get some further information on this. You can do things like add these text blocks. And this one here has a really neat feature, which is a before and after image slider. So you just simply need to upload a couple of different images here. And then you can see what this uh, location looked like both before uh, you know, back in the 60s or 1973 and what it looked like in 2018. So that's one of our apps there. You know, we've got different multiple tours around the, the, the city. Um, another one here that I wanted to kind of show you is Puzzling World. Uh, it's, a, it's a location in, uh, down in New Zealand again in, in, in uh, Ara, uh, Wanaka. So this one here has stuff with inside their um, inside their attraction. So if we click through here, this is one of the particular rooms that gives you some facts about that room. Uh, we can go from there. The, the other thing with these, uh, this one here is we've got the scan and find button. Now, this uh, is not going to work so great on my uh, on my laptop, but on your mobile device, the scan and find will bring up a, can, uh, a camera and allow you to either enter a keypad number or scan a QR code. So if there's QR codes for different things that you want to uh, display to your guests, you can just have the scan button, they can scan a QR code and it will take them directly kind of to that content. Uh, another little thing that we do there. <clears throat> they also have this info um, button here and you can upload videos and text as we said before, but then you can also do things like we've got special builder items here for things like ticket prices and opening times. And again, one of those location sections. 
So when we jump into the builder, I'll show you how really easy it is to kind of generate some of this content for your app. And lastly, I kind of want to go over this uh, one we've done for Walt Disney Family Museum. Now, um, what I want to offer here is that uh, this has been localized in several different languages. So if we drop down this list here, you can add content for uh, any different languages. We currently support 25 different languages, which is great. We even support right to left languages like Arabic and Hebrew, um, and we do all special screen layouts for it. So you don't need to be experts in, in that to, to be able to upload that. Um, and when I show in your builder too, we actually also allow you to uh, translate uh, any text to audio um, into multiple different languages. And we're also just adding a uh, text translation option as well. So, you know, you may not have all of those translations available, but it's really easy with inside our builder to be able to do that. Um, I'm just going to go jump back into that uh, Italian again. Um, Right, so we've got that there. Um, notice that all of that is in those different kind of uh, languages there. If I drop down, I can go back into uh, French, for example. And then notice that this is now in, uh, in French as well. So uh, super easy to add these multiple different languages. And when I jump into the builder to just a second, I'll show you how easy it is to do that kind of thing. So just jump in here. Another little interesting thing here is they've got multiple audio tracks for each kind of stop, plus these image galleries. So you yeah, really nice kind of uh, feature and, and a lot of really in-depth content that they've added to their, uh, to their app. So just gonna um, minimize that and jump back into this. So how easy is it to put this together? You know, as I said before, you, you may want us to do it and, and that's fine, we'll do that for you. We also work with content partners around the world. So we've got content partners uh, in, in Europe, in the US, uh, down here in Australasia, um, uh, lots of places around the world that we can help you get your content together. Um, and at least initially, that's what you might be what you want us to do is to, is to kind of take that and help you formulate all of that content that you may have and put that into uh, an app and an experience for people. Uh, but uh, you may want to do it yourself. You may have everything, uh, limited budget. You just want to get in there and do it yourself. And, and probably 80% of our, our customers do that. Um, and I just wanted to show you how easy that is to do. So I'm going to jump in here. Uh, this is our app builder. You can sign up for free for a for a trial, no problem. Just jump into our website, sign up, and you're done. Um, the way we've got it along here, we've got these projects and this content. I'm going to kind of start from the, the content side of things. We'll kind of find it easier to do there. But we've got this content library, and you can reuse any content that you upload to our thing. So I'll go to our media section here. I'm just going to add something, and I'm going to add a, an audio track. So. I'll add that audio track there, um, give it a name. We can upload a little thumbnail image for it. Um, we can grab a track from our, um, from our computer, uh, or we can use text-to-speech to translate it. So I'm just gonna choose from my computer. Grab one of these ones here. Right, so, We've got that there. I'm going to um, also grab a little thumbnail image for this one here and hit save. So simple as that, um, just upload it. Um, now, when we're thinking about this, we don't think about these things as just the audio track. Uh, as I said, you know, we've got the thumbnail image that's uh, super nice to go along with it. We can add a transcription here as well. This is great for um, uh, great for accessibility reasons. If you've got people who are hard of hearing, then you can uh, you know, add that transcription as well. So that's gone up in the background. We've uh, we've done that and we've compressed it and everything like that, and we've made it exactly right to uh, to put out to the the end users. Um, I'm going to add a language here. So say I might add uh, French as a language. Um, and notice that that's grayed out, but I will just go and um, add a new um, a new audio file here. So I've got one in a separate language. I can just do that. So simple as that. So now whenever the user has their um, language set to, to finish, they will use that particular audio track, um, which is no problem. So just going to 
that's just saved and closed that. Um, we can do that for any type of uh, media file as well. So, you know, we can upload photos, we can upload video, we can embed YouTube or Vimeo videos. Um, we can even create little mini web apps with inside, um, with inside our own app. So, you know, you might have a quiz or a survey or something like that, that we want to kind of package up and embed with inside the app. So we've got tons of possibilities there. We've just done a, a project for a uh, client over here that um, that adds a little game inside their uh, inside their app. So you know, the, the, um, there's lots of opportunities to really customize what you show uh, to your customers. Your little animated gifts and those kind of things. And what I showed you before was the uh, was the audio file. So that's audio file. That's the the media items. Um, quite often, I uh, like going through that and doing those first. Um, now, one of the things we saw back in the thing was those individual screens of content where we had things like the opening times and those text blocks and those media galleries. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to create one of those. So just going to go through here. We just go add new screen. We've got some different screen types. We've got our, the ones I showed you before. We've got the little embedded web pages that we can do. Uh, and then we've got these uh, panoramas. So if you've got any 360 degree images, it's great for things like you know, um, you've got a panorama image of a of a city uh, from the top of, say, like uh, some ramparts of a castle. You can upload that image there, and then you can put hotspots in the image so you can point out different things around the city. It's a really cool feature. We make that really easy to do. Um, I'm just going to create a normal story here. Um, again, you can choose what your primary language is for that. So, um, you know, if your if your native language isn't English, you can you can you know def default to everything being in uh, in, in a different language. Um, Screen is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to give you a, you know, a little title for your screen. Um, there are a couple of different options here for how we want the header layout to look. Um, cover images uh, that we need. So we, when we show it in the list that we you know, make it all really nice. Um, and then we can do things like um, put the location there and we can, you know, we can change the different uh, icons to anything we like. Um, it just, uh, you know, the, the really the option is, is kind of up to you. So once we've got our one, then how easy is it to kind of like put together the content within the screen? Well, it's actually really, really easy. So you can just basically make your screen up of different sections. So I'll go through here, um, grab a um, section there. I'm just going to um, copy and paste some stuff from my uh, Excel document. Um, when putting together this content, quite a few of our, our customers will make either a spreadsheet or a Word document where they've got all of that kind of content. And really, it's a case of just copying and pasting that in. So uh, just grab that as a proper title there. So we've got that. Our text section, we can do things, all those different kind of formattings that you're, that you're used to, um, alignments and things. You can link to external websites and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So. Just save and close that. And that gives us a little text section there. I'm going to go through um, location section. That was like that block that we had had before. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go grab and um, we had that opening time section here. Um, I'm going to show you how easy that is. So uh, Monday to Friday, nine to five, for example. And then we could put Saturday from say 11 till five, and then we can make this last one, say just a text row and go close on Christmas Day. So really easy just to put together that kind of, um, that kind of content there. Uh, we'll save and close that. So now we've got an opening time section, as easy as that. And maybe down below here, I'll put in a, um, a media gallery section, um, and I'll just choose some stuff from our library. So here's a whole bunch of stuff that we'd uploaded previously. I can just go through uh, my library and um, and grab you know different images and things like that. So great, just click on those and add and close, and then I have this little uh, media gallery here which I can use. Um, I can kind of reorder things as I like, uh, no problem. Give it a little, um, well, a little title if I like. 
straightforward. And there I've got like a text section, an opening time section, a media gallery. And then maybe we can do this image slider. That's that uh, one that I showed you before with that before and after. So, so I think this one might be a good one to do here. Do that before and after, and we can say, set a, a start point and, and an aspect ratio. So all really nice and good, save and close that. And that's that easy to do one of those before and after image sliders. So that was like we were showing at the uh, place down the road with that uh, pub down the road. It looks really nice and just a really nice thing for people when they're walking around a town to kind of see how things might have been in the past. Um, yeah, and it's that easy to add it. So as I said, lots of different things you can do here. Um, we're adding more and more different types of content to our builder all the time. So um, there's lots of different options there. And if there's something that we don't have in here, then definitely talk to us because um, it's something that we, we might be working on or, or might be a great idea that we might uh, put it on our backlog to, to add a later time. So that's, um, that's creating those, those individual screens. Um, and then we've got these things and we're going to group all of those screens and together into tours and stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, uh, drop into another account um, just so I can show you some completed content uh, to save a bit of time. So what a look here, we, we, we covered originally in the, the Auckland app, that Auckland uh, original shoreline walk, which was the, the one that's actually just passes below our offices down here. So I'm going to show you kind of how we how we put that together and and how easy it was to to kind of get everything. So, you know that tour, if you'll remember, um, I will might just jump back into it actually and uh, uh, try and jump back into this one. You know, it's a, it, that started off there with this um, thing. We gave it a distance and how many stops it had and, and a bit of an introduction. Well, that's simple. We're just going through in here. This is where we've got a title and we've got our introduction. Um, we've got a few different options here, like how we might, might want to lay it out, whether it's map first mode or, or that default mode like I showed you, whether it's self-guided or, or guided tour, um, uh, some duration options there and, and the distance as well. So we didn't have any duration there, but we did have the distance, which was set for three kilometers. Um, so that was the ones there. You can add an audio preview if you like. Um, you can enable the QR code scanner or a keypad and, and, and a map. So a few little options there. Um, the next thing we do um, when we look back at this uh, tour here is we had all of these stops in here. So these are all the stops and all the, all the screens basically that comprise of this tour. So um, we had all of these in here and Basically, it was as simple as um, going through here and either creating a new one directly or grabbing one from our uh, library. So the way we tend to do things is kind of make up all of the screens first and then just add stuff from our library. So it was as easy as going through and just adding all of those um, to the list. So we've done all of that. And then lastly, the case of putting everything on the map. So we've got all of these there. Um, really easy to kind of go through and I'll click on one of these. We can you know, set things like the latitude and longitude and whether we should automatically trigger content as people arrive at those stops. A uh, really powerful feature, especially if you've got audio guides that and you've got maybe a cycling tour or a driving tour, that as you go through a spot, it'll automatically start triggering that, uh, triggering that content uh, that is there. So you know, lots of little things we can set here around the types of geofences that we want to do. Um, you can even do really cool stuff like if you're driving one way down the street, it will play you one audio track and you're coming back the other way, it will uh, play a different audio track. You know, it's, it's really up to you about how you want to kind of put that kind of content together and what we can kind of do. Um, so, yeah, we just put that content together, all of those stuff's on the map. And that was as, as kind of easy as that to put that kind of tour content together. So really easy to kind of go through and create these different tours and different, uh, different locations. Um, and then if we look uh, back again, if we look at how we kind of put everything together, um, this particular app here had that tours tab and an info tab. Um, so a pretty straightforward app, but that was all done in this kind of projects tab here. So 
really easy just giving it an app name, primary language and secondary languages. As I said before, over 26 different languages that we, uh, that we support, and we're adding more all the time. A uh, few options here about enabling the QR code scanner or, or potentially a keypad as well. And then down through here, where um, we've got those different tabs here. So, you know, if we noted on our um, on our app itself, it's just got a, a couple of tabs, um, a couple of tabs here, tours and info. But you know, if I wanted to add a new tab that um, that maybe showed things by theme rather than location, uh, like a, like we did in that New Mexico app, really easy just to go through, add a new tab, and and, and sort of configure that as well. So. Um, you know, each of your tabs, um, uh, we can go through and we can edit that kind of content. So lastly, um, our submit tab here, and this is really how you want to publish your app. Um, you know, for multi-day tours, uh, you may want to only allow it um, to be available to your visitors. You may only want it on iOS and Android and, and not on mobile web. That's no problem. It's totally up to you. Um, we just decide how you want to publish it. Whole bunch of details there that the app stores need, uh, Apple and Google need. Um, you can generate QR codes for all of the different parts of your app, so you can give those to people to scan or, or put them on location. And then this coupons and pricing thing, I think, is is really important too. You know, if you've got a multi-day tour that you only want to give to your guests, you can lock the content uh, with some coupon codes as well. So you can generate coupon codes, um, and to access the content, they need a user needs to. Uh, type in that uh, access code. So really powerful feature there, um, limiting who can download and look at the app. Uh, it's one that's been uh, used by a lot of our, our customers today, especially in the in the uh, tourism um, tourism space and the tour operator space. Um, you can lock the entire app or, or maybe you want to give access to the, um, to the app to everybody, uh, but then you want to only lock particular um, parts of that. So you know, you might just want to, um, for example, just lock this one particular tour. So you can do that, uh, give it some uh, basic information there for the lock screen, and then you can generate code. So the only people who can access that content are people who can enter that code. And that's either, even if it's on the mobile web version, you know, it's not displayed to everybody. So lots of different there, lots of different items there and how you want to publish the app. And, and definitely our team can kind of talk to you about the, the best way to do that and how you might want to uh, achieve what you're, what you're trying to do there.